here for the problem statement, we have springs. So these here drawn are springs, right? So springs B, A, and B, C each have a stiffness or a spring constant K of 500 newtons per meter. And each spring, it has an unstretched length of 3 meters. So the springs at rest are 3 meters in length. Now we're supposed to determine the horizontal force F here applied such that the displacement D here is equal to 1.5 meters. So, so remember when it comes to springs, the force in a spring is equal to the spring constant K times the X. In this case, X is the displacement or how much the spring is stretched by. So it doesn't count the whole length, only the amount it actually was displaced or stretched. So whether it's comp you're compressing the spring or stretching it, it's going to react equal and opposite to the force that's being applied. So in this case, let's go ahead and draw a free body diagram to simplify things a little bit more. So starting off at point B, so we're going to be solving for the force apply now if we think about when it comes to the springs themselves for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction and if you're pulling on the springs that means they're basically going to be resisting that that force so it's going to be equal and opposite so it's going to be the opposite way the direction of each force of the spring so let's call the force bc and force a here so basically what exactly are these forces of the springs well it's a little bit better in this case since we have the the geometry let's go ahead and just draw the dimensions of it so just simplifying a bit just drawing the sides here instead of drawing the springs itself we know that this dimension from here all the way to the bottom here is about six meters right and another dimension given was actually here. D is equal to 1.5 meters. So we have this dimension here. And it's safe to assume that this is right in the middle of the 6 meters. So if we just wanted to take into account this triangle here, this would be 3 meters. The same goes for the bottom triangle. We would actually be able to solve for the length here. The length L of the spring once we once we have that force being applied. Remember, D is equal to 1.5 because there is a force pulling on it here. So now, just based off trig here, the length of the springs of each spring, since we're dealing with a with a geometry that so the the length here of this spring is also the same of this length here. So it's the same. So let's go ahead and solve for it. So in this case, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. L squared is equal to 1.5 squared plus 3 squared. So now square rooting it, we get our length of 3.354 meters. So this is the total length of each spring after it's been stretched. So now in this case, the question is, how much has it been displaced? Well, of course, we just get the actual stretched length, 3.354 take away the original length 3 so the it's been displaced only by 0.354 meters so this is our x here so now the question is what is the force being exerted by the spring bc and ba well going back to our spring equation the force of a spring is equal to the spring constant k times x so we, fa we have 500 newtons per meter times 0.354 meters. So the meters cancels out and the forces in the spring is 177 newtons. So that means this is the force in spring BA as well as the force in spring BC. So now we have the forces here, 177 newtons. And we also have 177 the same. So now it's nothing more than a static equilibrium. So the summation of forces along the x direction is equal to zero. The summation of forces along the y direction is equal to zero again. And then you're able to solve for the force F. So now when it comes to the angles, because you need to know the angles, so you're able to basically get the x and y component of each of these force vectors along the springs. So you're able to either utilize um, 
um, trig here to find your angle, or you could basically use your um, your slope, your rise, run, and slope. So let's go ahead and draw it out. So this one, basically I'm just drawing the triangle here. So this one is three meters and D is 1.5 meters. And this is the slope here, which basically is the length of the, the spring. Now the reason I'm doing this here is because instead of solving for the angle, sine, cosine, you're just able to use the basically similar triangle concept. So just to give you a better idea, so katoa, right? So katoa, sine, theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So instead of going with the opposite over hypotenuse, doing the sine inverse to, to solve for the sine theta, instead of using sine theta, you basically could just use this ratio here, which is exactly what I'm drawing out. So we have the so we have the rise here 3 and we have the run 1.5 we could also draw in the slope of this triangle but just to simplify it in this case let's say saying the the sine of this angle here so drawing it out here it's getting a little bit messy so drawing out the the angle here so let's say gain the x component of the force bc the x component is equal to cosine which is adjacent over hypotenuse sine over hypotenuse so cosine theta this angle theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse so 1.5 over the hypotenuse which was 3.354 so instead of going ahead and doing more steps to solve for the angle theta, I just basically use the fraction adjacent over hypotenuse 1.5 over 3.345 times the 177 newtons to get your answer. So let's do that again below. So the force in, K in uh, spring BC along the x direction is equal to 177 newtons times cosine theta which essentially is adjacent over your hypotenuse 3.354 so instead of writing cosine theta solving for theta first then you basically just skip a step here and it makes it a lot faster so we get 79.16 newtons along the x direction. Now, for whatever reason, if this is a little bit confusing, then by all means, go ahead and solve for your angle theta and just use sine and cosines as you've always done. Um, little by little, with more practice, this may become a little bit more clear, more easier to do. So this is for your x direction. Let's go ahead and do the y. So F, B, C along the y direction is equal to 177 this case is going to be sine theta which is opposite over hypotenuse so opposite over 3.354 which is 158.32 newtons so this is for the the spring bc for the x and the y direction but since the geometry is the same for ba the spring BA is also going to have the same force along the X direction, um, 79.16, and the same force along the Y direction, 158.32. Now, you could go ahead and just do the calculations yourself just to check it. But now, we're going to do the sum of forces along the X, along the Y, and basically solve for our force F here. So, one thing to note, just by visual inspection of the forces here in this free body diagram, we see when it comes to the spring forces, um, the springs, spring BC is basically ha you have a force going downward along the Y direction and spring BA has a force going upward along the Y. And since we know that they're both equal and opposite, just based on similar um, geometry, then we know along the y direction these two forces cancel out and the force that we're trying to solve f is only along the x direction so let's go ahead and step 
skip that step, but you're more than welcome to um, practice and do the sum of forces along the y direction. So the sum of forces along the x direction is equal to zero for static equilibrium. And I'm using my sign convention going right to be positive. So in this case, our force F here being our unknown is negative F plus, so F BC is 79.16, so 70. 9.16 newtons and then the other cable BA is the same 79.16 is equal to 0 so now solving for F you could go ahead and add F to both sides take it to the other side now our force F finally what we're trying to solve for is 158.32 newtons this is the force that is needed so that in our problem statement d was given as 1.5 meters so this is the this is how you solve these problems when it comes to static equilibrium which you utilize free body diagrams to draw the necessary forces you usually have to deal with geometry to get either the angles or the lengths in this case we had to solve for the stretched length of the spring so we could get the forces that are being exerted on point B such that we're able to use the sum of forces along the X direction and as well as the, along the Y direction to finally solve for the unknown force F here which finally is 158.32 so this is when it comes to um, systems in the equilibrium more specifically static equilibrium where there is no motion the sum of forces along the x and y direction will be equal to zero